Good morning, kids. I hope everybody is doing well and that you had a chance to enjoy the beautiful weather we had this week. I know I had some fun with water guns and water balloons. We just had a great time enjoying the beautiful weather. Take a minute right now and say hello and let us know who is joining us this morning. So today is a very special Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. Today is the day that we celebrate the day that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to all of those who believe in him. Back in March, we talked about the very first time that the disciples experienced the Holy Spirit, and we'll read about what happened in Acts chapter 2. It says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place, and suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. It would have been amazing to be there that first day with the disciples to experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent to them. But here is the cool thing, is that we can have the same experiences as the disciples because the Holy Spirit is just as active today and Jesus has given us the same gift of the Holy Spirit to help us in our lives. We have been learning about the different ways that the Holy Spirit can help us. And the first thing that we talked about was how the Holy Spirit helps us. And then we talked about how the Holy Spirit makes us bold. And last week, we talked about how the Holy Spirit can guide us. This is going to be our last study, in the, our last Sunday in the study of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to find one other way that the Holy Spirit works in our lives. So our big idea for this week is the Holy Spirit gives us creativity. Now, when you think about being creative, most people will think about how people are creative when it comes to art or music or dance. And I brought a few pictures of art and Lego and fort creations that our Freedom Kids have made. Here we have Josh and his Lego. These are just some fun pictures of how our Freedom Kids were creative. This is the wingers and their Lego creations. Here's some of the artwork. These were all pictures that our Freedom Kids posted a couple weeks ago in our Freedom Family Challenge. And here are some forts. So each one of the kids that made these forts or Lego creations or artwork were using their crea creativity. But there are so many ways that people can be creative. Let's take a look at Paul's story and see how the Holy Spirit helped him to be creative. <laughs> Hey, I'm MJ. And I'm Sean. And today's big idea is the Holy Spirit gives us creativity. Well, Sean, I know you're a pretty creative guy. How would you say that the Holy Spirit helps you to be creative? Well, I'll just be going through my day and then boom, I just get hit with an idea. And it's from the Holy Spirit and I can't do anything until I do something with that idea. Whether wow. that's music, art, or acting. Wow, that's so cool, dude. I want to share with you another form of creativity, something that we might not always think of. Check out today's God story and you'll see what I mean. Did you know that the world's oldest piece of chewing gum is over 9,000 years old? Hi, it's Duan. My friends and I love music. And one of the things that I enjoy doing is inviting them to concerts where Christian artists are playing and performing. So not only are they admiring the creativity of the music, but they're also hearing the words of the message of the love of Jesus. Being creative is a characteristic that God has. Think about it, the sunset, the sunrise, every animal, beautiful sceneries. He created them all. And as his kids, he makes us creative in different ways. Many of us are talented in music, or in art, or in drama, and the list goes on and on. And when it comes to sharing about Jesus, we can be creative in that as well. And that brings us to the big idea. The Holy Spirit gives us creativity. Today we're going to hear the story of Paul. And Paul is an apostle. An apostle is someone who's sent out to go and tell the message, the good news of Jesus. 
So Paul is in Athens in Greece, and he's there waiting for his two friends, Silas and Timothy. And while he's there, he notices that there's a lot of foreign statues, statues for unknown gods, and that the people in Athens are actually worshiping these statues. And it makes him really upset and really sad to see this. So one day he's in the market, he's in the square, where all the deep thinkers gather, the philosophers gather, and they argue with him. Paul was just trying to teach them about the good news of Jesus. And he was telling them how Jesus had risen from the dead. And they said to him, what is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas we've never heard before. We would like to know what they mean. All the people of Athens spent their time talking about and listening to the latest ideas. People from other lands who lived there did the same. These guys spent all their time talking about the newest ideas, about the latest things happening around the world and about their beliefs. So Paul got ready and he gave them an amazing speech. Let's see what he said. Then Paul stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus. He said, people of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. As I walked around, I looked carefully at the things you worship. I even found an altar with to an unknown God written on it. So you don't know what you are worshiping. Now I'm going to tell you about this unknown God. Did you catch it? Did you see what Paul did there? He used something that was familiar to the people of Athens, a spot of worship to an unknown God, and he used that to tell them about Jesus. This is another form of creativity. Before we talked about art and music, but being able to take problems and puzzles and words and solve them and be able to form them in a way to convey a message to people that they can better understand, that is creativity. In talking about the unknown God, Paul says, he is the God who made the world. He made everything in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. Paul continues to describe God and how he made us to be curious about him. Yes, we are God's children. So we shouldn't think that God is made out of gold or silver or stone. He isn't a statue planned and made by clever people. Then Paul talks about Jesus and how he was raised from the dead. Now, some people thought this was really weird, but they invited him to come back and share more. And some people even became followers of Jesus. The really cool thing about this story is that Paul was ready to share about the message of Jesus and the Holy Spirit gave him a creative way to do that. Now, if we stay close to God and we ask him to use us, the Holy Spirit will also give us a creative way of sharing the message of Jesus. Just like when I invited my friends to come with me to a concert to hear about God's love, God can use you too. I'm Duan. That's our God story for today. Look forward to seeing you for another one. Quickly, turn to the person next to you and answer the following questions. Question time! How did Paul connect with the people he was speaking to? What are some other ways that the Holy Spirit gives us creativity? Game time! Running wild. Can you say the key verse before the runner wins the race? Get ready. Three, two, one, go! Say it with me. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me from one end of the earth to the other. Acts 1 verse 8. 
Don't you think Paul was super creative in how he approached the topic of the unknown God and then how we tied it in to talk about Jesus? Yeah, that was brilliant. There are tons of ways we can partner with God to bring out our creativity. Mm -hmm. Let's watch this video of our friend Chris to see the beautiful scenes he creates from things that other people may not consider even looking at. Watch this. Welcome to Flagship Gallery located in Hamilton, Ontario. Flagship is a public cooperative gallery that is made up of artists who work in all media, sculpture and painting and drawing and digital. And the one thing that holds all of this artwork together is that we all share a common love of Jesus. I love to work with a lot of different media. And it depends on the season of the year. A lot of artists love to, to paint pictures of nature. And nature's beautiful, and I love nature. But I love to paint images of the city. Cities as they are, not cities that are perfect and clean, but cities that are dirty and that are grimy that are a reflection of, of who we are as people. We are imperfect and we are flawed, and I like the flaws. I like to bring out the beauty in the brokenness. God gives us the resources and the ingenuity and the drive to discover new things. And sometimes artists are really interested in media. They're interested in sculpture and paint and graphite. And they push forward and they learn how to use those things well. Just like a, a pianist knows how to tap the right keys. And that's not something that comes instantly. It comes with practice. Uh, there's an old adage in art that good art is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. And that perspiration is about mastering your media. When I think about how the Holy Spirit inspires me, it's not a magic formula. The Holy Spirit is just part of a dialogue. There's this three-way dialogue in which I am mindful that God is present. And I'm making art for his glory. And we as artists have a responsibility to practice and to learn and to develop excellence in our chosen media. When good musicians make a mistake, they don't give up on the piece. They incorporate the mistake into the melody. It's known as a passing note. So that the mistake is actually enfolded into the song. And that's kind of the way that God works with our lives. We as people are broken and frail and we make mistakes and we sin. But God takes that brokenness and the scars and enfolds them into the fabric of our lives, into the masterpiece. And our story is so much more interesting because we've seen God acting in a graceful way within our, our lives. There's a wonderful quote by one of my favorite artists, Mark Chagall, and he said, when I paint, I pray. And there's something prayerful about the process of creating art. In those moments in my studio where I'm all alone, I am praying while I am paying full attention with my eyes. So every artist has to, at some point, put their brush down and say, okay, I'm done. But once they're done with that piece, it has a life beyond the studio. That piece is taken and hung, it's framed, it's looked at, sometimes it's purchased, it's moved into a new home, and that work of art continues 
to, to speak to people. And I am surprised at the conversations that people continue to have with my work. And that says something to me about the way that the Holy Spirit works in surprising and unexpected ways. Question time! What stood out to you about Chris's story? How can you show God's creativity to others? I think it's awesome that Chris feels like it's a conversation between him and the Holy Spirit when he's creating art. It makes me appreciate his pieces more. Mm. And when I look at all the amazing pieces in the flagship gallery, all created by Christian artists, it really makes me think what the Holy Spirit was revealing to them as they were creating these pieces. Yeah. In this series, we've seen that the Holy Spirit helps us, guides us, brings us boldness and creativity, all things that enrich our lives and help us reflect Jesus better. Mm -hmm. Let's break into our small groups and talk about what this looks like in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> When Paul was in Athens, he knew that he was going to have to come up with a way to share the good news of Jesus with the people. Paul had to be creative, but he used a different kind of creativity. He didn't turn his message into a song or a piece of art or a dance. I mean, that would have been interesting to see, but that's not what he did. He was able to take the problem, puzzles, and words that he knew to find a way to convey the message to the people in a way that they would understand. Paul's solution was to use a place of worship and a statue of an unnamed God that the people were familiar with. This got the people's attention and he was able to start to talk about Jesus. They then invited him to come and share more so that they could learn about this person, Jesus. Some of the people even became followers of Paul and believed what he taught them. So basically, Paul used the creative problem solving, but he didn't just do this on his own. Paul was ready to share the message of Jesus and the Holy Spirit helped him by giving him the creativity to do so. We can also have the same experience as Paul if we stay close to God always and I'll always allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. He will help us to be creative. One of the questions that they ask you in the video is what stood out to you about Chris's story? As I was watching and listening to him, the thing that stood out to me was how he described God working in a graceful way in our lives. He said, we're all broken and frail. We make mistakes and we sin, but God takes all of our brokenness and all of our imperfections and enfolds them into the masterpiece that's our lives. I love the idea that every part of our lives, the good, the bad, and the ugly become part of our creative story that God has put in place for us. I'm so thankful that we have a God that cares enough about us to send the Holy Spirit to help us make us bold and to guide us and to give us creativity. I've really enjoyed our time learning about the Holy Spirit and I hope you kids have as well. Next week, we're gonna move on to a new theme, but remember what you learned this month and make sure to constantly be asking the Holy Spirit to help you, but we also need to be ready to listen when we ask for help. Well, our time is coming to an end this morning, but before we go, I have to announce the winning family for the Disney Song Challenge last week. So the winning family with 45 points this week was the Carson family. Congratulations, Carsons. I will make sure to get a prize to you in the next week or so. This upcoming week's challenge is to learn the memory verse for the month of June. So you will have until Friday, June 5th to send a video to me of you saying the memory verse. And everybody that sends a video will have their name put into a draw for a prize, and I will announce that next week in Kids Church. Well, have a great week, and we'll see you guys all on Sunday next week.